Hi everyone, this is Chapter 1, Section 2. This section is going to be split up into three videos, uh, and the entire section is on transformations of functions. Part 1, this video will talk about translations. Part 2, we'll talk about reflections. And Part 3, we'll talk about stretch and compression. So translation means to move left, right, or up, down, or both at the same time. So you could be moving diagonally as well. When we translate left or right, we're changing uh, the coordinates in the X dimension. And likewise, when we're going up and down, we are changing coordinates in the Y dimension. All right, so for the purposes of illustrating translation, I'm gonna use the parent function of the absolute value and um, I'm going to make a little table of ordered pairs that we've done in the past. And we know that whatever comes out of the absolute value is positive. So I'm going to just make a table of ordered pairs. This is going to give us that, whoopsie, that should be a zero. This is going to give us that V shape. Okay, and we know what this graph looks like, and I've already graphed it for you here. It's the V-shape with a vertex at the origin. And if we look at the domain, there's nothing limiting that domain. So we would have negative infinity all the way up to positive infinity. However, the range clearly is limited. Um, we can touch the minimum, which is zero. So I'm gonna use a bracket and then it goes on and on forever. Really, there's arrows here on our graph. Okay, so what's gonna happen here if we translate this f of x down by two units to create a g of x? We know that uh, translating down is gonna change our y dimension. If we're going down, we're gonna subtract two from y. So we're gonna end up with uh, a shifting down of our y values here. The inputs stay the same and the y values, these y values here, are going to be uh, subtracting two from all of those values. If I subtract two from three, I'm gonna be down at one. If I subtract two from two, it's zero, et cetera. And I think I might just make a little note here on this. So we're shift, shifting down by two and let's say um, on the Y or something like that. And I think you can guess uh, what's gonna happen here on our graph. If we shift this graph down by two, our vertex is gonna be at zero, negative two instead of um, the origin. And the sides of the V, in other words, the slope of these sides, that's not gonna change. So we just shifted it down by two. In terms of the domain, nothing has changed. We're not limited in any way. We're positive, uh, sorry, negative infinity up to positive infinity. However, our new minimum is going to be at negative two. And so in summary, if we wanted to go down like we did here, um, down is gonna result in subtracting from y or subtracting from the output. And if we wanted to go up, we're going to add that X number of units um, to the output. And I think that makes a lot of intuitive sense. So from a, a, an equation point of view or a function point of view, G of X equals the absolute value of x, what we started from, and we're just subtracting two here. Uh, or we could look at it as g of x equals the original function f of x minus two. Okay, now let's take a look at an example where we um, translate left or right. In this case, let's create h of x by shifting f of x left three units. We know that shifting left means a change in the x 
coordinates. So if we're going to go left three units from x equals negative 3, we're going to land on x equals negative 6, and we're going to keep the output the same. So in this case, when we go left, we're going to be subtracting 3 from our x coordinates. So we're going to have our inputs. In this case, we're going to create h of x. So our negative 3 uh, um, f of x is going to shift left by 3 units. So we're going to have negative 6, negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, and 0. And our output's going to stay the same. We're only shifting our x. So this time our vertex is going to shift from the origin over to negative 3, 0. Right here. And the slope on the sides are going to stay the same. It's just shifting left. Again, our uh, domain hasn't changed at all. We are still at an unlimited all real numbers here from negative infinity up to positive infinity. And our range is uh, the same as the original function f of x. Our minimum from the y perspective is zero and we can touch it. And our maximum is positive infinity. All right, so at first blush, you may think, okay, the output here, h of x, is going to equal the absolute value of x, and since we're changing the input values and we're shifting left, you may think we would have the absolute value of x minus 3. But let's take a look at that, and let's take that for a test drive and see if that's actually correct. If I substitute, let's just take our first ordered pair here on the top of our table. If I substitute negative 6 in this equation, I would have negative 6 minus 3, which would give us a negative 9. Then take the absolute value of that, and I should expect to see positive 9. But in fact, I want to see 3, not positive 9. So there must be something wrong here with this equation. However, if I put a negative 6 in here, and instead of subtracting 3, I add 3, that would be negative 6 plus 3, which is negative 3, and then take the absolute value of that, I get my positive 3. Let's try that with one more ordered pair. If I put negative 5 in here and add 3, I end up with negative 2, and the absolute value of this is our positive 2. So this may be counterintuitive, but if we want to shift left, what we're going to be doing is adding units to our input. And likewise, when you shift right, you're going to be subtracting. So it's counter what your intuition would tell you. Another way you can write this is that h of x equals uh, f of x plus 3. So let's make a little note for ourselves up here that we're shifting left by 3. And to summarize that, down here we'll say if you want to go left, you're going to add to the input or 2x. And if you want to go right, we're going to do the opposite. You're going to subtract from the input. Okay, so to create a little summary table, one of the things that the textbook is going to be doing throughout the entire um, text and all different functions is use the variable k for uh, y changes up down. So we could say if we're going um, up in the y dimension here in our uh, original function is the absolute value. We could say we're going up by k units. If we're going down, we're going to 
take our original and we're going to subtract by k units. And then in the left and right dimension, the x dimension, um, the textbook uses the variable h. So if we want to go right, remember it's opposite of what you think. So if you want to go right, we're going to be subtracting h units from our input. And if we want to go left, we're going to be adding h units. Okay, so moving up, down, left, right, it's going to work the same way for all functions. Um, so we just did an absolute value, but the same exact thing would be uh, if we had a quadratic, a parent function of quadratic. So if we took a look at what um, the trend there would be, if we want to take that and now translate that up, we would just take our original function and add k units. And if we wanted to shift down, we would take our original function and subtract k units. If we want to go right, remember we're going to say h of x is our original f of x, where we are subtracting the h units. So in this case, we'd say h of x equals, we're going to replace wherever we see our x, we're going to replace it with x minus h. So if I had x squared, I have x minus h in parentheses squared. I could actually um, go ahead and distribute all of that and I would end up with x squared minus 2hx plus h squared. And if we want to go left, that is h of x. We're going to take our original and we're going to add h units. So wherever we see our x in our function, x squared, we're going to replace that with x plus h. And I can distribute all of that together. I might as well do it out full so that everybody can see what's happening here. Remember, everything is distributing, right? So we've got x squared plus hx plus another hx would be 2hx. And then h times h is h squared. All right, this last page, you're welcome to try to do these practice problems on your own and then maybe fast forward and see if you did them correctly. Or you can watch along either way. Um, these are all algebraic examples where you have a verbal description, translate up, translate down, translate left, translate right, and you have an original function um, and you're trying to get the transformed function in equation form. Okay, so here goes. We've got the first one, write the equation of g of x by translating an original function, f of x, which equals x squared plus x. Go to the right three units. So going to the right, that means we are going to subtract. That many units from our input. So g of x equals f of x minus three. That means wherever you see an x in your original function, you're going to replace it with x minus three. So I've got x minus three squared plus x, or I've got to replace that x with x minus three. And you can continue to just simplify this all the way down, combining like terms. x minus three squared is x squared minus six x plus nine. And then over here, these parentheses aren't doing anything for us, so we could just combine like terms. So we've got plus x minus three, and our final g of x equals x squared uh, minus five x plus six. So just remember, if we're going right three, that means subtract three from x. Okay, next example is write the equation of h of x by translating f of x, which is the absolute value of 2x minus 3. Translate that left one unit. Left one unit, remember, that means we're going to add 1, 2x, our input. So h of x 
is going to equal f of x, f of x plus 1, because we're going to add one unit here. So wherever you see an x in the original function, you're going to replace that with x plus 1. So we have the absolute value of 2. I'm going to replace that x with x plus 1. I'm evaluating that function here. So h of x equals the absolute value of 2x plus 2. I'm distributing. Or if I simplify and combine uh, these constants here, I end up with the absolute value of 2x minus 1. Okay, next example, write the equation g of x by translating f of x, which equals 3x minus 5. Translate that up 7 units. Translating up 7 units, we're going to add 7 to the output. So we've got g of x equals our original f of x, which is the output, and we're going to add 7 to that. So we have g of x equals 3x minus 5, adding 7 directly to the output. That's going to give us g of x equals 3x plus 2. Last example here, write the equation of h of x by translating f of x, which is a quadratic that equals 2x squared minus 5. Translate that down 4 units. Translating down 4 units, we're just going to subtract 4 from the output. So we've got h of x equals f of x minus 4, h of x. We're going to take our original function, which is 2x squared minus 5, subtract 4 from it, and we're going to have h of x equals 2x squared minus 9. Okay, so that wraps it up for translations of functions. We looked at going up, down, left, right. Uh, we looked at how that looks algebraically as well as graphically. And we looked at the resulting uh, domain and range after we do those translations. I hope this video helps.